How can we handle challenging colors in Lightroom? Let me show you with this example. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file, following the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. Every now and then I can capture an insanely vibrant sunset like this. The problem is once I fix the exposure and played around with the colors for a bit, they start to look strange. So with this video, I want to show you a few workarounds how to handle those insanely intense color tones. First, we want to start with the basic adjustments as always. Let's expand the basic panel. For this scene, I want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape. This might seem counterintuitive since Adobe Landscape will bring up the base saturation quite a bit, but in my experience for this scene, it just looks the best. Then before playing around with the white balance, I first want to restore the exposure, giving us some more details in the shadows so we can get a better idea of what we want to do with the white balance in the first place. So restoring the shadows is pretty easy for this scene. I'm just going to bring up the exposure slightly just somewhere around here. Obviously this will blow out the highlights, but we don't have to worry much about that. We can simply pull down the highlight slider and we will get back all the details we need in the sky. That's looking pretty good so far. Still the dark areas of the image are kind of too dark, so we can fix that raising the shadows. And you can also see that in the, looking at the histogram, there is still a bit of underexposure, but as we raise the shadows, we kind of push the histogram more towards the right side. And that's exactly what we want. Now I don't want to go too crazy with the shadows, I do want to have some contrast left in this image, so I think that's a good spot. However, as you can see, there is still a little bit of underexposure. I'm going to fix that by simply raising the blacks, which will push the very darkest parts of the image, and thus we're getting rid of the underexposure. Perfect. Exposure-wise, this image looks so much better. Now let's take a look at the white balance. I think this image could use a little more warmth. So what I'm doing is to just slightly bring up the temperature just around here. And at the same time, you can already see how there is a rather strong magenta color cast. So what I want to do to kind of fix that is to bring down the tint. I don't want to get rid of that color cast completely because I think it looks good, but I want to bring down the tint anyway, introducing some more yellowish color tones this way. All right, and finally, we also want to go through the presence tab real quick. I'm going to bring up the texture. I'm going to bring down the clarity just to add a little bit of a softer look overall. And for the same effect, let's bring down the dehaze. Perfect. Finally, we can bring up the vibrance. I want this whole scene to be vibrant. We just need to take care of a few specific color tones later on in the editing process, but more on that later. So that looks really, really good. We can compare to before real quick. You can see we have nicely fixed the exposure. We have enough details in the shadows without losing too much contrast and without blowing out the highlights too much. Also, I think the colors didn't change too much from the original raw file. I think for this image, that's really important since I want to keep the original color tones. So from this point on, we can do a little bit of masking. Let's do this real quick. Let's head into the masking panel. There is not much masking going on for this scene. What I want to do is to use a linear gradient covering the top right part of the sky like this. And I just want to add some more punch to the sky by bringing up the contrast. I'm going to raise it quite a bit just to make the clouds pop. Okay, maybe I'm going to push the linear gradient further up a notch to not cover too much of the sky, but I think this looks good this way. Then let's use another linear gradient for the boardwalk in the foreground. I'm creating a very soft edge here, just like this. And what I want to do here is I want to brighten up this area to have a little more detail in those wooden planks down there. So let's bring up the exposure just a little bit. I'm also going to increase the whites, making them slightly brighter this way. And what I want to do as well is to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity, just to give the boardwalk more punch. Okay, I think I need to make the edge a little harsher here to not affect the water too much. 
that's looking better. Then I want to apply one more linear gradient with which I want to cover everything except the landscape in the background and the sky. So I'm creating another very hard edge, just trying to cover the water in the back. And in here, I'm simply going to raise the whites one more time, making this area slightly brighter. Okay, now I'm quite happy with the masking adjustments. Again, we can take a look. Here's the image with the basic adjustments and here with the masks applied. We have shifted the attention throughout the image a little more into the foreground. I think it just looks better this way. Now let's focus a little more on the colors. For that, we want to start in the color mixer tab. With this intense sunset shot, what's really not looking that good is that orange yellowish color tone right there in the brightest parts of the clouds. This is a little too saturated and it, I don't know how to say it, but I think it kind of hurts looking at it. I want to fix this particular area. So what I want to do is so first let's go into the hue tab and I want to change this orange color tone a little bit. So I'm bringing up the orange hue and by doing this, I am changing the orange color tone, giving it more of a yellowish color tone. And I have the feeling this will make the color a little less intense without changing the saturation. Besides that, I also want to change the purple hue of this image. Since right here, we do have a lot of purple colors going on. I want to make them look a little more blueish. So I'm going to bring down the purple hue to achieve that effect. And in turn, this will just give us a little more natural color in the sky, which I think just looks better. Now, after adjusting the hue, we can also head into the saturation tab. Still, we can play around with the orange and yellow tones to fix this area right here, which is super intense. So instead of bringing up the saturation, which makes it worse, we are going to bring the saturation of the orange color tones down, balancing this area a little bit. I'm also going to bring down the yellow saturation just right about here. And instead, I want to bring up the blue tones as well as purple and magenta. So you might think at this point, the image doesn't look that good anymore because we lost quite a bit of saturation, but don't worry, we will come to that in a minute. What I want to do as well in the color mixer is to head into the luminance tab. And one area of the image that is still annoying me is this bright spot right here in the sky. This is still a little bit too bright, but I don't want to bring down the highlights further. What I want to do instead in the luminance tab, I'm simply going to use the yellow luminance slider and bring it down. And this in turn will give us more detail in that blown out part. It will basically fix the highlights by making them darker without affecting the rest of the image. So that's perfect. At this point, we want to reintroduce saturation to make this image vibrant again. So after the color mixer, I want to head into the color grading tab for some split toning. Let's start with the highlights, which will affect the sky mostly. So we want to bring back warm color tones to the sunset scene. I'm going to set up the hue. Let's choose a very warm color tone somewhere around the orange area right here. And now let's simply bring up the saturation. I'm raising it quite a bit. And you can see this will bring the saturation levels back to normal. But at the same time, we kind of have given the image a very eye-catching color tone overall. Now we can balance the colors a little more by going into the midtones. And instead of applying a warm color tone, we are going to apply a cold color tone. And we are doing this to not get overwhelmed with all the warm color tones going on in this image already. So we are setting the hue up to a cold color tone like this and bring up the saturation as much as we want to. I'm not going to raise it too much because I think a subtle amount is better for the midtones in this case. And for this image, something I usually don't do is I'm going to use the global color wheel right here. And again, I'm choosing a warm color tone. And as the name suggests, as I bring up the saturation, this will affect the image globally. So I'm going to raise the warmth of the whole image by introducing this specific color tone to it. So this looks much better. I still think we are lacking a little bit of saturation. 
So let's go into the calibration tab. And usually I'm going to play around with the blue primary hue and saturation. In this case, I don't want to change the hue, I just want to push the saturation up. And right at this point, we do have a beautiful looking color tone all over this image without making those very intense clouds look too strange. So that's my way of fixing color tones like these. Now, one more important thing right here, we do have some very ugly chromatic aberration, which shines through even, even when zoomed out. To fix that, let's head into the lens corrections and make sure to click on this checkbox. This will fix most of that ugly chromatic aberration and makes the image look so much better. Finally, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the detail, add some masking while holding down the Alt key. We don't really want the sky to be sharpened that much, so I'm going to bring up the masking quite a bit and I'm introducing more sharpening. Wonderful. And that's pretty much it for editing this image in Lightroom. I'm quite happy with how this is looking. I do think I want to clean up the shot a little bit. For that, I'm going to be using Photoshop. So let's do that real quick. Right click on the image, go to Edit In and choose Photoshop. Right away, I'm going to create a duplicate layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup. Then I'm going to use the spot healing brush and I can already spot a few sensor spots, which I want to remove using the spot healing brush. Also, I want to get rid of these things on the side. So let me try the remove tool for that. And let's see what happens. That looks okay. And I guess we are done editing this image. So I hope this Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.